This video is going to focus on how we're capable of dating rocks and fossils. But we're going to start off looking at relative dating when we're coming up with a sequence of events. Something like this happened first, then this happened, and this happened last, instead of having an actual numerical age for a rock. So once we realized that our Earth was significantly older than 4,000 years, we didn't really have any idea how old it was. We just knew that it had to be a lot longer than 4,000 years for all of the different features to have developed on our planet. So in the 18 and 1900s, scientists tried to date the Earth, but they were really unreliable. Nowadays, we have what's called numerical or absolute dating, where we can come up with an actual number for how old something is. We can analyze a rock and say this is exactly 4.28 thousand years old. But what we use throughout most of Earth's history trying to figure out Earth's past is relative dating. And this again is just placing the rocks in a proper sequence of formation. It's kind of like following a recipe. You do this first, this happens second, this happens third. In order to relatively date a sequence of rocks, there are going to be six different principles that we're going to use to figure out exactly what sequence things occurred in. And the first principle is probably the simplest. And this is called the principle of superposition. So if we're looking at a sequence of rocks, we can see that the layers at the bottom are going to be older and the layers at the top are going to be younger. So think of this as like building a building. If we're going to construct a three-story building, we always have to stop, start at the bottom. We're going to build the first floor, then the second floor, and then the third floor. Our first floor will be there the longest, it'll be the oldest, and as we progress upwards, it'll get younger. Just like we see rocks do with this principle of superposition. Now our second principle is the principle of original horizontality. This is telling us that all sedimentary rocks or all layers of sediment originally started off in nice horizontal layers. So if we see rock layers that aren't flat and horizontal, like we see in the image on the slide, something has happened to disturb these rocks. In this case, we have pressure squeezing the rocks together from the left and the right side of the photo, giving it this folded shape. So when we see these folds, we know that some kind of deformation, some kind of change has happened to these rocks since they were originally deposited because they're not in those nice horizontal layers. Our third principle is the principle of lateral continuity. This tells us that horizontal layers continue until they eventually thin out along the sides. So if we're looking at an area like a canyon or a stream bed, if we see matching rocks on either side of that stream bed, they are were originally connected. But the water has carved its way or eroded its way into those rocks, breaking them up over geologic history. Our next principle is called cross-cutting relationships. This is where some kind of geologic feature, such as an igneous intrusion or a fault or break in the rocks, are going to cut across pre-existing rocks. So with these, we always see that the rock that has been broken or intruded into will always be older than the break or the intrusion. And that's just because in order for a rock to be broken into multiple pieces, it has to exist before it can be broken or faulted. We'll get to our last principle in our next video, the principle of faunal succession, but we will get to it. But I want to end this video looking at the principle of inclusions. This is going to be really important, especially when it comes to trying to date sedimentary rocks. Because sedimentary rocks are made up of inclusions. They're including pieces of pre-existing rock pieces. 
especially if there are those plastic rocks where we have sediments and pebbles glued together. So if we see a sedimentary rock that's made up of a bunch of different pebbles cemented together, this tells us that the inclusions, those pebbles, have to be older than the sedimentary rock. Because in order for that sedimentary rock to exist, for a bunch of pebbles to be cemented together, the pebbles had to exist before they could be cemented.